Hi there in Hale State. Welcome to our third, yes, that's right, our third Road Dogs Tour stop. We are glad to have all of you with us. We sure wish that we were sitting face to face with you for this, but circumstances being what they are, we are socially distant and uh, nonetheless still very, very happy to have all of you be a part of our discussion tonight. And we've got another great panel of coaches for you. The new women's basketball coach here at at Mississippi State, Nikki McCray Pinson, our men's golf coach, Dusty Smith, and our soccer coach, James Armstrong, are all with us. And we're gonna talk for about the next hour about a myriad of topics related to what's going on in college athletics right now, mainly uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll talk about some historic things that have happened in the state of Mississippi over the course of the last few weeks. And, of course, look ahead to the seasons that uh, are in front of our coaches and their teams and talk about what the process has been like of keeping up with student athletes and ultimately getting them back on campus here in Starkville as we prepare for the start of a new academic and athletic year. So with that, uh, I'd like to say welcome, first of all, to all of our coaches. Thank all of you for taking some time to be a part of this. Uh, It'd be awful boring if it were just me sitting here for the next 45 minutes. So thank you for that. Uh, And and let's start with uh, let's start with what's been going on. And and that's this COVID-19 pandemic and how it's impacted everyone's lives. And I think sometimes people believe that folks that work in athletics maybe are operating in a different world or maybe they aren't impacted by some of the things that impact every person that's just doing their job in a community every day but Nikki when when you look at it it has impacted all of us in very similar ways has oh definitely um you know for me personally hired three months ago um just trying to get a sense of enjoyment um first of all and i haven't had to do that just because you know of the pandemic i haven't had a chance to really be in face front you know face to face contact with my kids um and i'm a hands on coach so that that's really big for me but um what i have been able to do without letting this pandemic you know define my circumstances is we you know, we are in a new normal of how to communicate. It is forcing our young ladies to communicate. I like that. Um, and just being being able to get them, get them on the phone via FaceTime, Zoom, this, this is something that is ongoing. They are absolutely used to it. They're probably tired of it. Um, but it is a way just to get them to, to communicate now. And um, I, I like it um, because... Um, my biggest thing is communication. That's a big, big foundation for, you know, me, our program, our staff, and um, our kids are, are really understanding that. But um, it's our new normal. I've adjusted to it. And um, it's just part of my day now. Dusty, how have you and your team adjusted to this new normal? Yeah, at first, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of getting getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. And I think, you know, in early March, when we when our season we were on the road and we got pulled off the pulled off the golf course on the 12th hole of our practice round out there at the Schenkel Invitational and it was just like hold on a second what you know what's going on here but just like Nikki said it's just communicating with your players there's obviously a you know different way to communicate with them now since we can't have face to face a lot of zoom calls uh you know zoom meetings uh, a lot of FaceTime with individual players um the good thing about golf though um is it's the one sport right now you can you can actually go out and play and you know do it safely um, social distancing and you have your own equipment um, you don't have to touch the flag sticks or the rakes or anything like that so our guys have actually been able to you know play in some amateur golf tournaments um, you know stay stay competitive out there uh, which is which is really nice to see so that you know we've been we've been fortunate from from that standpoint but Obviously, it's just it's just frustrating, you know, not knowing what's going to happen in the future. I think everybody's kind of sitting back saying, OK, when can we start? Um, when can we get our kids in here? Um, so, you know, the un- the uncertainty is uh, pretty tough, but we're uh, we're managing. 
And listen, if you play golf the way I do, socially distancing has never been a problem. Everybody else plays in the short grass. I play in the woods and the trees. I make sure that I give everybody a pretty big circle to work with out there. Right. So, yeah, yeah, hopefully your guys are, are doing much better than that on the course if they're well, out practicing hope, right now. Hopefully they're in the fairways and on the green. I hope so. Uh, James, what about your situation? I mean, you just wrapped up your first year as head coach. You had a lot of momentum. You're going into the spring, and then all of a sudden this thing hits. Uh, how's it changed uh, your life in the last four months? Yeah, I think uh, student athletes thrive when they have structure. That's all they've ever known. You know, it's, it's the thing that they need in their lives. So we, for us, we just like Coach McCray and Coach Smith said, you know, we've done a lot of Zoom calls. Um, Thing, thing different a little bit for us is that we're the first team to return to campus. We will have 13 new players, which is a, obviously a huge amount. It's nearly half of our roster. So for us, it was about building some structure, you know, uh, telling them to control what they can control, taking away as much anxiety as we can, and really kind of get them to get to know one another, you know, and bring those new players into the team culture, the family environment. So it's kind of what we did, but there's been a lot of Zoom calls, and it's uh, it's been a really good time for us as a staff. Obviously, like you said, we've been here a year now, but it was such a hectic year, uh, both in terms of recruiting, um, you know, de handling players, all those kind of things. So to actually just regroup and refocus, and and to be honest, evaluate everything we've done so far, and, and kind of take a fresh set of eyes on it. So that was really good for us as a staff. Nikki, how many of your student athletes are back? Um, right now, you know, they've been coming in periodically. So I have about seven players back, um, you know, off and on. Um, there's some kids that are local um, or within proximity of, of, of Starkville. Um, and, um, you know, everything is volunteer. I applaud them, you know, number one, for coming back. Um, you know, during this period, I'm learning a lot about them, who's really motivated, um, who has that sense of urgency because, you know, I'm just, you know, my first and foremost is safety is number one. I don't want them coming back unless they're comfortable, um, first and foremost. Um, but it's really good that, you know, our, our sports medicine department has done a phenomenal job of, you know, having our staff prepped to make sure that the safety of our student athletes are, are first and foremost. And they just, they, they, they've done a great job. You know, I applaud them. Um, our student athletes have been really good. Those that have volunteered to work out, um, they have been doing what they needed to do um, to get better um, so that, you know, for us, we're able to start up on July 20th. And as a new coach, you know, again, for those that are comfortable, I'm going to be ready to rock and roll. So, you know, I want them to be in some type of shape or form to where we're able to implement, you know, a, a little bit of our system. Um, but, yeah, um, just I'm excited. I'm excited to get started and um, just looking forward to it. But, yeah. We have about seven of them on, and then hopefully we'll have everybody here by July 20th. Dusty, how many do you have here right now? So right now we have uh, Garrett Johnson, who will be – who will be. he was a senior last year, but he obviously got that, that extra year of eligibility, so he's coming back. Um, he's been here. He's been, he's been cleared by the medical staff, so he's been able to use our facility. And then we have one more player uh, who's, a, who's a local player who's – Who's get done through the? Who's gone through the same kind of, um, you know, medical protocol? So um, I know just just talking with our with our guys, obviously, like like Nikki said, you know, safety's safety's the most important thing. Making sure that everybody's healthy and and that they feel comfortable. But just talking with our team, man, they're itching to get back, and they 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 love the structure. They love being together. They love, you know, it's. Like everybody says about Mississippi State, it's a true family environment. And I know just talking with our guys, they, they tell me, Coach, I can't wait to get back on campus. Can't wait to be able to practice with the team, start preparing for tournaments. So um, I, know, I know our guys are itching to get back. James, you mentioned that your team typically is the first team back because of when your season is scheduled to start. Does that mean everybody's already here or are you missing a couple still? Where are you guys at? So we returned everybody but our two international players on June the 22nd. Um, just like Coach McCray said, um, it's voluntary workouts. Um, so they're working with our strength and conditioning coach right now. Uh, as soccer's actually never been given granted access, I sh should say, for, uh, for summer. 
So we won't actually get as a coaching staff to work with them till August the 4th. But everybody's here. So I have 30 players here out of my 32 on my roster. Farm Bureau Insurance stands ready to provide financial relief to our communities in this time of crisis. This includes a one-time credit to all personal auto policyholders, a donation of $500,000 to the Mississippi Food Network, and additional payment options for those hit the hardest, all while continuing to service customer claims as well. But this is the time to go above and beyond. These are a few ways we're keeping the Farm Bureau promise. To learn more, talk to your agent or visit us online. Go with the home team. I want to circle back to something that all three of you have talked about, and this is not an ad for a product. This is just kind of what we've been using. All of us now know the term Zoom, and it means something completely different than what it meant to us probably prior to four months ago. Uh, Nikki, what have you learned about technology and embracing that that maybe you've never had to know or use at any other point in your career? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm not a tech knowledgeable person. I don't like all this. I mean, it is, it has been an eye opener from the standpoint of just downloading the app, learning how to use it through chat, and then talking when you have the mute button on. You're like, oh, sorry, I'm on mute. Like it is, it has been a whirlwind. But um, I have a great video guide that constantly teaches me things. I think I was just talking to you guys. I don't even have a virtual background. I don't even know how to do that. So um, that's not my area of expertise. I just know how to get on, talk, and then leave the meeting. I didn't know how to do that. But um, it is it's something that I've, I've grown to, to do. Even now with recruiting, you know, we can't physically be out as coaches. So I'm live streaming, watching games, you know, and I'm having to constantly do this. So I'm really working on my yoga stuff now just to learn you know get my posture back but um it, it is the new normal um I, I actually like it you know it's, at first I was just kind of like okay but I, I actually like it it has allowed me to figure out a way to communicate to do more coaching stuff more clinics all of those things so um you know, I think we've learned something new. We've tapped into something new, especially if you can't get to someone like now with recruiting, we can recruit via Zoom. You know, we can bring Mississippi State to a family rather than them actually coming on campus. I never would have thought that that would be possible, but it has been. And it's all about your presentation and, and you know, how to make a family feel really connected to you and your school through Zoom. And, um, and it's been very impressive to just see how it, it's evolving. And I, I constantly learn something every day. I credit my staff for just continuing to educate me um, every single day and, and how to work this and how to, you know, you know, people to feel my presence, you know, through Zoom. We've only had one virtual background in three weeks that I can recall. And that was coach Ricketts who was clever enough that she put news park right there behind her. And we got a feel for what it was like to be in her venue. I think my vote so far for the best background though, Daryl Greenan's got everyone beat because he had chickens in the backyard when we got together last week and was telling us about going out and gathering eggs in the morning and how that's been a change in his life that he gets to do it now rather than the family. But that that's been the thing that, has been interesting to me is you get to see inside people's lives a little bit because we're all kind of limited in where we can be and what we can do. I, I'd, I'd follow up with this, Nikki, you talked about it's, it's a people and it's a relationship driven business when you're talking about coaching and recruiting. Mm -hmm. Ben Howland said that he's watched a lot of games the same way you have to try to evaluate recruits. And how is that different from being in the bleachers in person and seeing a prospective student athlete as opposed to doing it on a computer screen? Well, it's very different because you don't, you don't get to see the little details, you know, how they handle a little bit of adversity, you know, with their teammates when they come out of the game, coach gets on them, 
you know, it's different because you can't get the bird's eye view of everything. You know, if they're looking up in the stands at their parents, you know, um, for me, I like to look at all those things. Um, right now, I'm just seeing the game, you know, and it's hard because through this, some quality is good, some quality isn't good. So you can't really see the number, who it is, all of those things. Um, so that part is, you know, is a little bit challenging. Um, but also, again, that personal connection, you know, just being able to get a feel, you know, of them, how they are, um, in all aspects in that, in that particular, you know, arena, but, you know, you're still able to evaluate. Um, it's just, you know, in a, in a confined area versus seeing the whole thing. I like to see the whole thing. Like I said, how they are with their teammates, their coaches, you know, you find out a lot about, you know, a player when you just really can observe them, you know, in that, in that particular setting. But, you know, it gets the job done. We're constantly asking high school coaches for film. Um, you know, everything that is approved, we go through compliance to make sure that we can watch certain live streams, events. Again, quality, good, some quality, not so good. It's all about that communication and feedback that you're able to give that recruit, you know, and, um, and or their, their parent. So, um, but again, it's, it's what we're doing now. It's our new normal. We're adjusting every single day, not making excuses, but just trying to, just trying to, you know, figure out a way to continue to recruit and recruit the, the best kids that fit our system and, and obviously um, Mississippi State. Dusty, is there something you've learned about the technology that you didn't know prior to four months ago? Pretty much everything. I feel like the only thing I really knew was, uh, was FaceTime, if you wanted face-to-face -face contact. So when Zoom and what is it, WebEx came out or whatever, it's just, it's, um, it's just your new normal. But the cool thing about it is, uh, you know, you can, I've, I've been able to have Zoom calls with just my freshman class coming in, um, two international guys and a guy from Alabama, just getting them together with, with myself and Coach Ewing, who's my assistant coach, and being able to, being able to, um, you know, talk to, talk to them, you know, as a group and, and then getting able to uh, communicate with each other uh, through Zoom, and then if you have like a leadership committee or or council or whatnot, you can you can kind of break it down and meet with them and 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 talk about the upcoming year and and then obviously you can do you can do things uh, that that I probably never would have done in the past as far as getting your team together for a team meeting during the during the summer because typically, you know, our guys are out there competing in amateur golf tournaments and they're on their own and they're not really they're not really here on campus during the summer. Uh, because they're 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 traveling, so we've been able to uh, to do that, um, which has been nice. And then, as far as recruiting goes, um, it's just recruiting to me is, you know, it's probably been the the most difficult part of this whole deal because, in my opinion, recruiting is all about it's all about relationships and it's all about getting to know the player and the family and having them on campus and and spending you know 48 hours on an official visit and um, you know, watching them compete in a golf tournament, you know, knowing, knowing how gritty they are or how tough they are when things aren't going their way. Um, all that stuff is kind of, is kind of taken away from you. But the, the good news about golf is typically uh, golf scores don't lie. So if you're, if you're, if you have a kid on your radar who you've been, you've been keeping uh, track of his progress and he's out there shooting, you know, subpar rounds every time finishing in the, you know, top top ten of national golf tournaments. You know that, hey, this kid's probably pretty good. But you know, I'm I'm pretty old school with recruiting. Still, I, I I still do a lot of you know handwritten letters to to guys. I don't I don't recruit a whole lot of people because I do like to have that relationship um, with the player. I feel like if I'm recruiting too many people, it becomes very you know surface level. And to me, the only way you can get to know somebody is is for it to be very personal and. And um, so that's, I, I still, I still do a lot of phone calls and I still do a lot of handwritten letters. So um, just, just certainly trying to adjust to the times. James, I think by number of our group here today, you probably have the, the biggest team in terms of the number of student athletes involved. And Mike Leach told us a couple of weeks ago that he's had team meetings with football where you've got 
over a hundred of these little boxes <laughs> on your screen. I, I'm curious, have you had a team meeting with, with your group and, and what is that experience like if you have? Oh yeah. I mean, we've, uh, as soon as it was a ca- allowable compliance wise, we were meeting at least three times a week. Um, you know, we were allowed the eight hours. So we made sure to, to put the player's mindset um, at the forefront of what we were trying to do. So if we felt they needed a little bit of fun, we would play games. Um, my director of ops would set up like family feud or a kind of scavenger hunt in their, in their house, you know, pick the nearest object and, you know, go into breakout rooms and then figure out what you're going to do with each object and uh, quizzes, like, you know, all those kind of things. Then we did some tactical work. We did some team building goals. Um, we had Dr. Brutus come in, who's our awesome sports psychologist, her and Dr. Goodson, um, to talk about some of the, the mental side of the game and the mental you know, stress that the athletes have, have been placed on because of this situation right now. So we've done a lot of team meetings. And, and like Coach Smith said, it's nice because we have you know, broken it down with meetings with just the leadership council, just the incoming freshmen, or, or just meetings per class. So you know, my staff has done a great job of, of keeping it varied, but um, the players have also done a great job, like Coach McCray said, you know, like seeing their level of commitment. Um, you know, they wanted to do those meetings. Um, so it's been really neat from that standpoint. Angel Brutus, by the way, for those of you watching who aren't familiar, uh, is nationally recognized and award-winning. And as we record this, just recently received another honor. If you want to read more about that, hailstate.com. You can learn about Angel Brutus and how she helps all of our teams on campus from the sports psychology perspective. One other thought I would offer, too, the perfect game for Zoom, Hollywood Squares. Because we're all in the little boxes already. We're all in the little boxes already. So there you go. Uh, get nine of your friends together and, and have a blast. Let's transition now. And I want to go back to Nikki because you were a very important part, along with all the other coaches on campus, of successfully lobbying the state legislature in Mississippi to ultimately change the state flag. And it's not the first time that you've been in a place where this discussion or this type of event has happened. It happened for you at South Carolina too, when they removed a, a similar marker from the, the grounds of the state house. How were those experiences similar for you? Um, I think very similar. Um, you know, again, the, the state flag, um, the Confederate flag was moved from South Carolina just five years ago. Um, you know, and I think, you know, it, it was definitely the right thing to do then and it was the right thing to do now. Um, first and foremost, I just want to applaud, you know, everybody that had their hand in it from the legislators, Governor Reeves, all of them that, you know, worked dil- diligently to, to, you know, do the right thing and have the flag removed. Um, just so grateful um, for the University of, uh, for Mississippi State University, our leadership, Dr. Keenum, um, John, just, you know, just standing up for what is right. And to, to be in that moment and to represent um, our university, to represent our student athletes, um, to represent our state was, was a pretty surreal moment for me, um, especially only being on campus for about 48 hours. But just really thankful to just speak from my heart and, and talk about, um, you know, what, again, what we all came there to do um, and, and to stand united and, and to do the right thing. Um, but yeah, just to go through it again, um, to see it happen in South Carolina and to see it happen, you know, in the state of Mississippi was, was, was very special. Um, now it's not up to the flag that's going to keep us from being in postseason play. It's up to us. So we can eliminate that. Um, you know, I think our student athletes and our coaches, we put a lot of hard work into the season and we want to be rewarded. Um, one of the reasons why I came to Mississippi State is because I knew we could be successful. And, um, and there has been success here. We want to continue that. Um, but now we control, you know, um, hosting here. And, um, you know, through our hard work and, you know, how we continue to perform throughout the season, um, it, you know, our fans are a big part of that because they are just as invested um, as well. But it was a special moment. I'm just thankful, um, you know, that we got it done and, and just – to be a part of that um, was, 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 was pretty, pretty phenomenal. I want to unpack 
a little bit more here uh, and, and eventually all of us are going to get involved, but because Nikki was kind of at the forefront of this speaking on the steps of the state house, I, I just think, you know, let, let, let me continue with you here for a minute. You had, you hear coaches and you hear players talk about the platform that they have been given through athletics. Why is it important to take advantage of those opportunities like the one that you were given at the state house a couple of weeks back? I think it's very important. Um, it's a moment of, you know, empowerment. Um, you know, when you have those opportunity to, to speak on, uh, on things that's right. Um, you, you take advantage of that. And especially with everything that's going on right now, um, besides the pandemic, the social injustice, um, you know, to me, um, that was that was a very powerful moment, um, and it was the right thing to do, especially surrounding everything that was going on. And um, you know, just to be able to stand there and along with the other two speakers and you know all of the universities behind me on those steps, um, you know, it, it just it, it was an empowering moment, not only for me, hopefully for our, our student at you know our student athletes. Um, you know, and, and that everybody that was involved, you know, just to, um, to say, you know, we are here. Um, this is what we believe in. Um, we're standing strong. We're united. And um, we're here for, you know, a cause. And we're here to do the right thing. And we want you to do the right thing. But um, that, was, that, was, that was a pretty awesome moment. And um, it, it was just so empowering. It, it was. It was in so many people have texted, called, and just said, wow, you know, just happy for you, happy for the state, um, happy for your school. Um, because I said, you know, these student athletes and even myself, when you, you know, get involved with the university, yes, I'm involved with Mississippi State University, but I'm also associated with the state, you know, and, um, and, and that's what it's about. I represent Mississippi State. I represent the state of Mississippi. And now to be, you know, on the same playing field as everybody else, you know, where we, we, we show a symbol of unity and not divided um, is, is pretty special. There are no shortage of powerful images that have come from this event in recent weeks. But to me, the one that stands out is you standing at that podium addressing the crowd and head coaches, not just from the three major universities in this state, but from every NCAA Division I university, they were all there. People talk about sports. We love rivalries. We love to pick at our rivals, but that's a moment where all that got cast aside, and I just thought that was so powerful. Did it feel powerful when you were standing there with all those people? It was. I mean, it's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than basketball. This is about, you know, um, society, um, what we represent, who we are as people. Um, and that moment was so surreal. And it was a powerful moment um, to just see everybody come together, you know, and um, to be united, um, to stand as one. Um, it, it, was, it was pretty special. But again, it goes to show, you know, it's bigger than basketball much bigger than basketball. James, when we started in on this topic with Nikki, you immediately started clapping your hands and smiling uh, at, at what she had done to help make this happen. Why is this an important moment? And what, what impact does it have on you? You've lived in the South and you've, you've been a coach in the South, but you're, you're also from England and you've been in this country now and you see things like this happen. What kind of impact did it have on you? Well, I think first and foremost, it just brought a great sense of togetherness um, amongst the whole community. Um, you know, obviously as coaches, as student athletes, I'm blessed to, to have one of the most diverse teams on campus. So obviously when all of this racial injustice started happening, um, we were in constant communication with, with the whole team. And, you know, we had some, you know, really eye-opening conversations and some really educational and emotional conversations as a group um, which needed to happen um, like coach McRae said we were blessed to have great leadership um, you know that did this with a great amount of integrity and 
you know, that sense of togetherness in terms of doing what was right, you know, and when you take a look at it, um, that's the only way you can put it. So to have, you know, the flag changed and, and the way that this athletic department stood behind what was right was, was really um, encouraging, you know, and, and all the coaches that went there that day had all the other coaches behind them, you know, and, and they were doing it for all of us. And so to see the success that we got and, and like I keep saying, it, to do the right thing, um, that was really rewarding for, for the state of Mississippi, Mississippi State, our athletes, our coaches, our administration, everybody. This is a different piece of coaching than I think a lot of fans look at. It's not X's and O's. It's not player development per se, although I think you could make an argument that maybe it is a little bit of player development when you talk about broadening horizons and looking at the world for what it is in a given moment in time. Um, what were the conversations like? How, as a coach, do you handle conversations of social injustice, racial equality, all the things that we've been trying to unpack, not just in the last few weeks, but over several decades and several hundred years in this country? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and like you said, I'm from England, I, you know, I'm Caucasian. So for me, it was providing a safe space for us all as a team to, to be able to voice our opinions uh, and our experiences. So, you know, the African American members of our team actually put together a little presentation, um, you know, which was personal at, at their end. So I won't share that, but it was really eye-opening um, for the team to understand some of the things that they have had to encounter and go through um, from childhood, you know, and what they're still going through to this day and age, you know, regardless of where they are in the country. So it was a moment for all of us to, to sit back and listen and, and educate ourselves and and understand where, you know, they were coming from and, and really, you know, support them and be a, be a shoulder to cry on. And, you know, like I said, I'm blessed to work with an unbelievable staff that pride themselves on, on player coach relationships. So, you know, we were there for them. We've already talked about Dr. Brutus and the amazing work that her and her department do. So really it was just providing an opportunity for education and, and a safe place to, to express your opinions. Dusty, what kind of impact does it have in the golf world? Because clearly your guys are seeing this happen just as you're seeing it happen here. And like me, you've been here about three years. So you're, you're probably still learning a little bit about the history of the state and what all this means too. But how did you address what happened and, and how proud are you to be part of a group that stood so unified to try and help make it happen? Yeah, I think, I think when you look at it, um, it all starts with the leadership. And I think Dr. Keenum, uh, John Cohen, and, and everybody who had had a big part in that, it's just, it's just awesome to be part of something uh, where your leadership stands up for what's right. And them giving the student athletes an opportunity, an opportunity to express themselves and what they feel is right. And just watching, watching, um, watching all of the universities and everybody in the state of Mississippi come together during a time where things are so divisive and it feels like everybody's on, on different pages and you're either over here or you're over there. And just to see the whole state come together and say, you know what, this is good. And this, this needs to happen. And we want a flag that's inclusive to everybody. Uh, it was just, it was just awesome to see. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to be, to be part of it. Nikki, I'll come back to you for the final thought on this. And I, I've heard you say something similar or read that you said this in the media. And, and Tony Hughes talked about this with a reporter not too long ago. For those of you who don't know Tony, I don't know how you can't know Tony. He's, he's been in the state so long. But a, a very highly respected member of our football coaching staff and highly respected football person in the state of Mississippi and just a good man. Uh, Tony and, and, and you have both talked about recruiting and how it relates to not having the symbol of the former state flag hanging overhead now. And Tony said there have been parents who've talked to him that have just said, Coach, you know, it's nothing to do with the school or the staff. This is just not for us. You made the comment that South Carolina, there was a change when the mm -hmm. Confederate banner was taken off the state house lawn. Can that be a positive outcome here too? Can can recruiting can more doors open in recruiting now because there is, 
I don't know if inclusive is the right word or what, it, but a more welcoming symbol is coming hopefully for this state. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, you don't have anything that's held over your head when it comes to that. You know, I, I love, you know, what our university stands for family. I love the, this community um, in Starkville. I mean, I've been here now two weeks and everybody is so welcoming and have been very um, just, you can tell that they're passionate about, you know, their athletics. I mean, I'm, I'm driving around sometimes at eight o'clock at night and people are just walking around with their dogs and it's, it is very welcoming and very, very, you know, friendly. Um, but yeah, that is what, you know, when I, when I think about Mississippi State, it's about getting recruits on campus, you know, because there is that myth with Mississippi. Now that myth can be gone because that flag is no longer here, but they get a chance to feel that sense of family, not just from our staff, from their teammates, but from their community. Everywhere you go, you are the entertainment. People are going to know who you are. They're going to welcome you. They're going to say, hey, you know, oh, you play golf or you play, you know, basketball. Wow. I'm, I go to their, I mean, it's just part of it. And when you, when student athletes and recruits can feel that, that is very, very powerful. And, um, you know, I, I think that is something that I'm excited about to continue to, you know, talk with recruits about. Um, again, you know, no one can hold that over our heads anymore. And, um, and for me personally, I think, you know, you're just sitting on a gold mine. I mean, we have everything here to be successful. The fans, the support, the media from, from every, I mean, from every sport. And, um, you know, again, now we don't have the flag over our head, you know, where people can recruit against us anymore and you're right when i was at south carolina recruiting took off um businesses took off everything i mean we brought more businesses to the to the state we're bringing businesses back to the state because you know when you're able to host and you have ten thousand fans every night and you're bringing in different teams and their fans hotels are filling up eating places are filling up i mean it's just a win-win so just um, just really excited about, you know, to keep it moving forward. Um, um, nothing is going to change from that end. Um, again, no one can hold that over our head anymore. And we can just continue to talk about what makes, you know, Starkville great, what makes Mississippi State different, um, you know, moving forward and, and what makes our university special. By the way, congratulations on finally being in the new house and being settled. Nikki's been doing all this stuff, and she's been doing it from different parts of the Southeast. And finally here, finally settled, overcoming the pandemic, get, helping get the flag changed, all these things, doing great work, despite the fact that she's not been in one place for any of it so far. Congratulations. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Go with the home team. Let's transition here. We, we talk about pursuits of championships in athletics all the time. That is the goal. You want to win championships, conference championships, national championships. Nikki, you, you've competed at a championship level on lots of different levels, at the NCAA level, the professional level, the international level. How do you get there? How do you build that kind of culture to get your team to that championship level? Mm -hmm. Well, I think for me, I'm very fortunate because I'm coming into a situation where this team is right on the brink. Um, and Vic Schaefer and his staff did an amazing job of, you know, making Mississippi State a brand, um, very attractive, where players um, want to be a part of it. Um, these fans have done a great job of embracing, you know, this team, our athletics department. Um, you know, again, from our leadership, you know, there's nothing here that is keeping us you know, from continuing to sustain the success. Um, 
again, you're right, having been a part of many multiple championships, it's a mindset. You know, it's the it's the little things, it's the details um, and things like that. When I look at this team, very, very talented team, without question. Um, you know, just continuing to get the right players um, in here that can get us over the threshold um, and just, you know, just being, being very sound and solid, you know, um, in everything that we do um, from how we are off the floor um, to how we are on the floor to the last three minutes of the game, you know, and just having a clear understanding of what that looks like, you know, so that our kids are comfortable you know, that they're comfortable where they can make plays. My job and our coaching staff job is to prepare them for that. You know, I don't want our kids to be afraid to make plays. Um, when you're in championship games, doesn't matter what I say, you got to step up and you got to make the play. You got to be confident um, in your ability to make the play. And, um, but I think we're right there. Um, we just got to continue to continue to recruit and, um, you know, continue to get the top kids in here that fit, you know, what we're doing, fit, you know, our mold um, and our culture um, every single day. But it is a mindset, you know. Um, I'm no fan of good. You know, I say that. I'm no fan of good, you know. You know, we work. You know, our staff, we work. We build relationships. We want players that understand that work ethic that goes into being a champion on and off the floor. That is a daily investment. It's not something that you turn on and off like lights. It is a constant investment. And, you know, when, when players want to be a part of our program, they know that is it. That's what we're, we're here to be champions on and off the floor. Um, that's how I started at Tennessee. If we didn't win a championship, it was a failure season. You know, that is – you know, that's the culture that we want. You know, how do you invest in becoming a champion every single day? It starts with off the court. It starts with off the court because what matters off the court definitely matters on the court. James, in your first season as the head coach of our soccer team, you helped the program break a long drought to get back into the SEC tournament. And you've been a part of a team at Auburn that was near the top of the SEC for a long time and was in that hunt for championships every year. How do you go from getting into the SEC tournament to taking that step to the NCAA and beyond? How do you do it? I think a lot of what Coach McCray just said, she said it perfectly. Um, you know, it's, it's recruiting the players that fit your system uh, and fit what your, your culture. Um, we recruit character first and foremost, and then obviously they have to have – the technical, tactical, and physical abilities on top of that. But um, we challenge each player to, to leave the jersey in a better place than they find it. Um, we challenge each player um, to prove themselves again every day. Um, grit is one of our core values that, that we stress in every single thing we do. Um, Coach McCray said about off the court, off the field, I should say, for us, um, making sure that you've got your life in check, both from an uh, academic standpoint and a social standpoint, so you can perform on the field and there's not something hanging over you. Um, I think surrounding yourself with a great staff, um, which I'm fortunate to have an unbelievable staff that, that help and work really hard. Um, so I think all of those things. And, you know, we talk about commitment to the process. Um, you know, the year before I got here, they qualified for the NCAA tournament, which was a major achievement at the time. Um, for the program, but they still hadn't qualified for the SEC tournament since 2004. So we had to get that off our back. So thankfully we did that last year, but I'm blessed that my team, you know, they're not satisfied by that. And, and we as a staff certainly are not. So now it's time to, to build more depth uh, by bringing in those correct players, those right players that fit um, and then working hard, you know, and that, that's, that's the bottom line. You know, you, you, you can't achieve anything without hard work and talent. So putting the two together, then you can do special things. But we have everything we need here to be successful. Um, it's now up to us as a group to execute. Dusty, you were part of NCAA championship appearances at Vanderbilt as an assistant coach. You know what it takes to get there. What do you have to implement? What steps do you take in golf that help you get from being a team that, you know, gets out of that regional round and, and gets to a point where you're playing for an NCAA championship. Yeah, for sure. I feel like um, 
first it starts with the team understanding that winning is hard and winning championships is probably the toughest thing that you are going to do. I remember in, in 2017 when I was at Vanderbilt, um, we, we won the SEC championship. We were the number one ranked team in the country. We, we won the NCAA stroke play portion of the national championship and made it. And we ended up losing in the final four uh, to Oregon that year. But just looking back on the year and looking at how we won the SEC championship, how we won the stroke play of the national championship, there were critical moments during the round of golf where the little things you did every single day was the reason that one of our guys made a critical putt to, to win the match or, you know, one of our players making a five foot birdie putt to, to, um, you know, give us the victory. It's, it's, it's the things you do every single day. And I, I tell our guys all the time, everybody works hard. Okay. Everybody says they work, work hard. Everybody says they're putting in the hours. Everybody says they're grinding out and stuff like that. I said, it's a lifestyle. Okay. It's what you do every single moment of the day from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. What are you doing today to make Mississippi State golf the best program in the country? And it's constantly reminding um, our team that, um, hey, we got we to gotta be excellent in everything we do, not just not just during the, you know, four or five hours, four or five, six hours we're at the golf course every day. It's, you know, what are you doing in your diet? What are you doing? Are you getting extra workouts in? Are you talking to um, uh, Dr. Brutus and Dr. Goodson? Uh, you know, what, what are you doing to make this program better? And then, and then lastly, I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in team, team chemistry. Um, I believe you got to have a team that loves each other, uh, that's willing to put it on the line for each other. Um, every single day and when you know when you're in a when you're in a golf tournament when you're at the SEC championship or or an NCAA regional um, just knowing you know looking back at, the, at your other four your other four guys who are out there competing with you knowing that hey you know what these guys have put in the work they have my back I'm not alone and um, just you got five guys out there doing their job to the best of their ability because they want to do it for their teammates and they want to do it for their school. And I think, I think when you have that, when you have that culture, you can, you can um, build a championship program, which is obviously what we're, what we're trying to do in the golf program. I don't know about anybody else that's watching with us, but you three have about got me ready to run through a wall right now with all of this. This is, this is great. Um, Hey, I want to tell you, I really appreciate you doing this. I do. It's been a very quick 45 minutes. Uh, we're actually a little past that, which is fine. But before we leave, for the, those who are watching, those who are, are yearning to be a part of Mississippi State sports again, to, to have that piece of their life returned, uh, Dusty, kind of lead us off with, with what your message is to our fan base right now and what you would say to them about the prospects for the future here. I would say the future, the future is going to look bright and, and just understand that we are all in this together. It's, it's an uncomfortable time for everybody. We all want to be out, you know, on the basketball court, on the pitch. Is that what they say, James, the pitch? <laughs> on the pitch, on the football field, on the golf course. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be back, and we're going to be back stronger than ever, and we're looking forward to that day. James, I love the terms pitch, and I love tactical. Tactical just feels like it's so strategic, and we don't necessarily have that term in any other sport. Um, while I love those two terms, leave me with something a little more powerful for the fan base here about what your prospects for the future are and, and how excited you'd be to see them all back at the Mississippi State Soccer Complex. Well, I think I'd like to start by saying they, they made such a difference to the fans made such a difference to us last year and the players completely embrace that fan experience. So it's a priority for them that they, they, they love it when people can come out and yell and cheer and ring the cowbell. We would love the Mississippi state family to come out. Um, it's a community feel. You can bring your dog if you want to do, you know, it's outside, it's free. So please, please, please come and yell, scream, and ring your cowbell and yell Hail State. Folks, it's a good time. I'm not lying to you. It's one of my favorite things to do in the fall. It's a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. I'd encourage you to go out and, and, and be a part of that. Nikki, you get the last word here. Uh, <laughs> you have not uh, 
you have not coached in this environment as state's head coach. You know what the environment can be like, though, having come in here on the other side of it before. What would you say to our fans uh, who, who want to be a part of this so bad right now uh, to, to help them keep the faith in a trying time? Well, first of all, I would tell them thank you, um, number one, because um, it definitely takes a village um, for any team, any university to be successful. And they are a big part of our village. Um, and I talk to every single player. Um, and the one thing that they say are the fans, you know, so I, I want to say thank you thank them for being a part of the village. Um, I want to thank them for just embracing me and my staff, um, it, you know, in recruits. Every time we sign a recruit, they, I mean, they are on it. So again, just thank them for being a part of the village. And I can't wait for the hump to jump, you know, um, this fall. I'm excited. <laughs> I like it. That's, that's a new one. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to give you a cut of the marketing on that too when, uh, when we get the t-shirts together. Coaches, again, thank you so much. Uh, this has been a wonderful, uh, you know, almost hour that we've spent together. It's been great getting to know all of you. Uh, to all of you that have uh, stayed with us uh, over the course of uh, this nearly one hour, thank you. Uh, know that, as the coaches said, we miss you, and we're looking forward to seeing you, and we hope that day is coming very, very soon. Continue to do what you can to help us. Uh, help us stop the spread of the virus by just doing the simple things. Uh, wear your mask, wash your hands, do all those things. They will make a difference. And we look forward to seeing all of you again very soon, including next week when we get together at this same time for another edition of our virtual Road Dogs Tour. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We look forward to seeing you again soon.